There you go, verse 20. Uh, so Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because of his love for her. And then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, for my time is completed, and I may go into her. Well, I was watching one of those TBN movies, which are all very well done, and this particular uh, part of it, it was kind of well done. I mean, the whole movie was just kind of well done anyway. But it was early in the morning, and he's out there. They got Jacob, and he's banging on the gate. Laban! Laban! And he walks out, and he says, what? He says, it's the end of the seven years. I want my wife. And he says, gee, you are punctual, aren't you? I mean, he counted right to the day. The movie was really well done, but I mean, they just showed the anxiety of this guy Jacob looking for his wife, and I don't know, I think you watched that because I called you the day that movie, whenever I see a TBN movie on, I would always call her and say, one of those movies is on. What's that? What's TBN? Turn, uh, I'm sorry, not TBN, uh, uh, Perfect Broadcast yeah. Network. What is it? Uh, not, TBN. Not T, no, 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 uh, TBS. No, what is it? What's that? Oh, PBS. PBS. The Christian uh, Channel with the yeah. crouches on it. Yeah, that's it's TBN. TBN. Yeah, TBN, the Christian Channel. It's, um... Uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network, that's what it is. There's several of them. You've got Christian CTN, Christian Television Network. You've got Trinity Broadcasting Network. Anyway, the people on these channels are usually not, I'm not really keen on them. You know, the Crouches and all the Benny Hinn and all that. But they do make good Christian movies. They make really fine quality Christian movies. Richard Harris is usually the main actor in them. that are not made by TV. That's right, but they're always on TBN. TV plays them. There are no commercials, and they, they are very well done. Anyway, that was just something I remember from that particular movie. Of all of the highlights in the movies, that was probably the funniest one of all. He's out there just banging early in the morning. I want my bride, you know. So, All right, uh, sorry to divert there. 21. Laban gathered all the men of the place and made a feast. Now in the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to him, and Jacob went into her. Okay, so he has Leah instead of Rachel. All right, so he, he got deceived here. So you can see his name is Deceiver. He has deceived his father. He's deceived his brother. And now it's being turned around on him. So his name, he shall deceive, is also, doesn't mean, but I mean, it also is, he shall be deceived. All right, that's, uh, you know, I'm not sure. Um, and this concordance, I got to wait and I have to check it online. I'm not sure what it means. And this one just doesn't help. But that's a good question because his name has some bearing on this. Guaranteed it does. So anyway, please go ahead. Laban also gave his maid Zilpah to his daughter Leah as a maid. Same thing as you saw with Rebecca. They give the maid of the daughter as a kind of like a bride gift. And so now she has, not only is she a bride, but she also has her own servant working under her, and that's forever. I mean, this girl belongs to uh, Leah now forever. That must have been awfully dark. What's that? <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Well, you got figures, they got a tent and maybe an oil lamp, and that's probably it, so, yeah. And as long as you don't see that one lazy eye going off to the side, I guess you don't know the difference. <laughs> I, well, whatever, okay, go ahead. Behold, it was Leah. And he said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? Was it not for Rachel that I served you? Why then have you deceived me? Okay, so here, here we have something that you may or may not have seen in the past, but back then they did the same things that they do now. So when the bride is dressed for her wedding, she'd be totally covered from head to foot. You wouldn't see a bit of her, and then you make your vows and you just go in and have your wedding night. And that is why... The Jewish people, to this day, will pick up the veil over the wife and they will inspect her before they make their vows. This is a tradition that carries on to this day and it is carried on into Christianity. And that's why we wear a veil and it's flipped up. is because of this account right here. So just so you know that this goes all the way back to this account. And uh, what's that? He is a creep. But you know what? He... Discount on the next seven years. No, he doesn't. There's, because he knows that this guy is a hard worker and that he is being blessed. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to read that in just a second. He is being blessed because of the hard work of Jacob. And what did God promise? He said, those who bless you will be blessed and those who curse you will be cursed. He hasn't cursed him. He's blessing him by giving him his daughter. He's blessing him by, by you know, it may have been kind of a curse in some way having two wives, but anyway. <laughs> 
Anyway, uh, please go ahead. But Laban said, it is not the practice, is it, it is not the practice in our place to marry off the younger before the firstborn. Mm. Complete the week of this one, and we will give you the other also for the service which you shall serve with me for another seven years. All right. Well, the good thing is he didn't make her wait, him wait seven full years. He just said, complete the bride week. First week is called the bride week. And then after that, you can marry the sister. And you can just imagine the, the position that Leah must have been in. One, they, they forced this on her. She knew she was doing wrong. And then she gets rejected after the first week. And she's never really loved like she should have been if she had just a single husband. So you got to really feel bad for Leah. But in the end, she's really abundantly blessed. And we'll see that in the... Uh, the Line. What's that? Jesus comes through her line, not Rachel. Yes, that's correct. That's right. He comes through Leah and not through Rachel. So, anyway, um, what, which is a blessing all in itself. But, uh, okay, please, go ahead. Uh, Jacob did so and completed her leave, and he gave him his daughter Rachel as his wife. Laban also gave his maid Bilhah to his daughter Rachel as her maid. Same thing happened again. So now he's got two wives and he's got two maids working in the house when he was a single guy a week and a half ago. What's that? I mean, just talk about ex exponential growth in, in the size of the house and also in the problems it brings. Wow. All right. Go ahead. So Jacob went into Rachel also, and indeed he loved Rachel more than Leah, because she served with Laban for another seven years. Now the Lord saw that Leah was unloved. Okay, actually the word is hated. They say unloved here, but yeah. the term is like um, Esau, I, I'm sorry, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. This is, this is actually, you know, he's just has no love for her at all. Unloved is probably a good translation, but the word is hated. So, okay, go ahead. And he opened her womb, but Rachel was barren. Leah conceived and bore a son and named him Reuben. For she said, Because the Lord has seen my affliction, surely now my husband will love me. Okay, so the name Reuben means see, it's a son, or see a son. Okay, Ben is son, like Ben-Hur, son of her. And then Ru is kind of, uh, if you remember the name of that one well, Bier, Lahai, Roy, the well of the one who sees, you have Roy and you have Ru. To see, okay, it's the same general word. So, see, son. So she's saying, see, I have a son. All right, and this is because she's saying the reason why is because the Lord has looked on my affliction. I'm unloved, and He has given me a son. It's like her putting it back in His face and saying, see, see. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Then she conceived again and bore a son and said, because the Lord has heard my affliction. He has therefore given me this son also. So she named him Simeon. Okay, Simeon means to hear, heard. Okay, same thing. Is She said, because the Lord has heard. And if you hear like the name, uh, it, when you, uh, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. So Shema and Simeon, or Shimon would be his name, I believe. Anyway, it's the same general word there. Samuel is the same idea, Shmuel in Hebrew, okay? It's to hear. And so that's what you're, the name is being given because the Lord is heard. All right, go ahead. She conceived again and bore a son and said, you know, for someone unloved, she certainly does get a lot. She gets a, yeah, she gets a lot of babies. She gets a lot of loving. Morrison and said, now this time my husband will become attached to me because I have borne him three sons and therefore he was named Levi. Levi means attached. Okay. And so she's saying, my husband will now be attached to me because I've given, you know, having a son was considered an honor. Having a daughter was just making the family grow. But having a son was the big honor. Having three sons like my mom did would be a great honor, okay? And so uh, she says, he's going to be attached to me now. She's, you can see the longing in her, and so she names him attached. A thing about this, though, is not just that it is 
indicating that she is looking forward to being attached, but this word is actually used, or this name is actually used as kind of a prophecy. If you look at the people of Israel, the Levites were attached to the people of Israel. They were spread throughout all of Israel. Every town had Levites, okay? And so they are attached throughout Israel. So not only is it an indication of the mother's, uh, you know, her thoughts about having this particular baby, but it's also almost a prophecy of the people, Levi, being attached throughout Israel. You see that? Okay, there you go. You no, please, yes. Okay. 30. No. 35. 35. Oh, sorry. Oh, my gosh. Can't miss this. This is the big one. And bore a son and said, This time I will praise the Lord. Therefore, she named him Judah. And then she stopped bearing. Okay. Why did she name him Judah? Praise. 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 Judah means praise. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take and we're going to go to the book of... Uh, Joshua, and we're probably going to go to s chapter s 8, but might be 7. We're going to find this real quickly, and we're going to show you a little bit about it. And I think I may have brought this up in this class before, but it's always a good reminder. Um, is uh, it's No, I'm sorry. It would be uh, 8. Let's see here. Draw a war with them. Stretch out your hand. I um, might be 9 even. Hang on. Um, I made... Okay, here. We're going to go to... Um, it is eight, I'm right, and it says here, Then the Lord said to Joshua, stretch out a man. Okay, hold on one second. You're going to see this several times in the... Um, what are you looking for? Well, I'm looking for something in particular, and I don't want to tell you until we get there, because we could be... Uh, let's see here. Uh, 30,000 in the people. Um, there are several times that you're going to see this. There's one against the Amalekites in, um, uh, I think it's the book of Numbers. You're going to see it here. You're also going to see it later in the book of Judges. And um, I want to find it real quickly here. Let's go to the book of Judges. Where would it be? It would be um, towards the very, rather than Joshua because I'm looking in the wrong place. Hey, Ken, what's up? We're going to go in the book of Judges, way back to the back of it. Big Demir. That's right. He was out at the beach. What a service we had at the beach yesterday. Man, oh man. Let's see here. I bet it was. Just unbelievable. Oh. Came out of Okay, why don't we go to Judges chapter 20. You're, this is about three or four times you're going to see this in the Bible. And I just want to make a parallel of the verse we just read about Judah, meaning praise. So if you're in Judges chapter 20, read verse 18. Now the sons of Israel arose, went up to Bethel, and inquired of God and said, Who shall go up first for us to battle against the sons of Benjamin? And then the Lord said, Judah shall go up first. Judah first. The reason why is because let praise go first in everything relating to the Lord. All right. So that is where his name comes from is praising. And she kind of, if, if you ask Charlie Garrett, she made a mistake in the naming of her children because she should have named Judah the first son, praising God for what he had given. Instead, she's thinking about herself and what how my husband is going to love me, I'm unloved, and all these different things in the naming of her first three sons, when in fact she probably should have called him Judah, because praise goes first. But you will see this as you read the uh, Old Testament probably four times, I think, is they will go up to the, the, the um, ark, which is usually in the tabernacle, sometimes it's not, and they will throw what are called the Urim and Thummim. There are two stones that used to be kept in the ephod of the uh, uh, high priest, and the stones mean delights and the perfections. And so they would throw them kind of like throwing dice, and they would give them an oracle from the Lord. And so they'd say, should we go up to battle? And the Lord would say yes, or what should we do in this instance? And the Lord would tell them. Well, in all, every case where they ask who should go first, it always says, let Judah go first. In other words, let praise go first. You get that right, you're going to be victorious in battle. That's all there is to it. So, but Apparently, Leah didn't learn her lesson 
right at the beginning. So anyway, let Judah go first. Therefore she called his name praise. Then she stopped bearing. Okay. 